Watching Maui burn, watching Maui burn, March 17th, 2023. This uh, whole video will be pretty much about the Maui fire. Uh, so if you've heard enough news on that, maybe you just want to tune into something else. But I got a little different angle on that than you're going to hear about from anybody else. Uh, of course, the first thing that is insulting is that uh, the Biden administration says that $700 per household is the compensation they're going to get for the fire from uh, FEMA. What an insult, huh? <clears throat> you think that your federal government cares about the American people, especially not the Democrats, the corrupt, warmongering Democrats, the, uh, uh, the criminal organization known as the Democrat Party. Anyway, I just wanted to get into this fire because, you know, I, I've been telling you over and over and over again that this fire, uh, how it all came about, well, actually the root of the fire goes back to that everything is political. Okay, I get tired of going to my VFW or I, I, I'm not even, I'm persona non grata in my Veterans Association because when the, the whole Afghanistan fiasco took place, I was beside myself and I went in, I said, we got to make a statement as a veterans organization. We don't want to get political. We don't. Everything in life, accept it. Accept it. Everything in life is political, including your life. And these people in Maui paid with their lives because of their politics. Okay? That's the whole meaning of this video. Do you understand that everything in your life is politics? You have to pay attention to what you're electing, who you're electing, what party you, that you're affiliated with, the people in the party, and you have to be an active participant in your local government. And you have to talk to people about things. If you go into a bar and they say, we don't want to talk politics, don't flip and go to that bar. If you go into a VFW and they say, we don't want to talk politics, don't go to that VFW. If you belong to an organization that says, we don't want to talk politics, get the hell out. Because it depends, your survival depends on politics. Because everything in life is politics. Get tired of hearing this crap. These people paid with their lives because of their politics. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain that statement to you in just a minute. Let's, let's just read from what I've been able to capture from various sources off the internet what took place. The picturesque island of Maui in Hawaii was ravaged by a series of wildfires that have claimed the lives of at least 106, that number is up by now, uh, people left behind by a trail of destruction last week. Now doesn't that sound pleasant? Can you imagine burning to death? Some of the bodies are burnt beyond recognition. They said they might not be able to identify them for years to come. Or maybe a year. I, I shouldn't say years to come. Probably over, it could be over a year before they can identify the bodies. That's how badly burnt they are. Let's keep going. What caused the fires in Maui? Oh, flammable grasses. Hell no. It was a lack of fire management. That's what I've been telling you. Yeah, there you know, was flammable grasses all around. Okay, they could have, but what you do with those flammable grasses is either you, you create fire lanes in them or you, 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 you tear them out or you do con what most smart people like here, we do here in Florida, you do control burns. Well, guess what? The Democrat, the Democrat environmentalist in Maui wouldn't let them do control burns. So they had this tender box waiting for just whatever happened, which by the way, we'll get to what exactly happened. Tender box waiting to just be ignited and burn everybody to death. These environmental groups, they're, lo they're environmental lunatics. That's why you have fires in California. That's why you have fires in Canada. These environmental lunatics are destroyed. I mean, can you imagine the amount of carbon dioxide that goes into the atmosphere because of these environmental lunatics? I'm sorry, you have to manage your forest. You have to manage your grasslands. And they didn't do that. Oh, it gets worse. It gets worse. Let's just keep going. Oh, my God. The invasive non-native grasslands covering a quarter of the Hawaiian islands 
have been identified as a significant as a significant fire risk that experts have been warning about, been warning about for years. But the Democrats that they kept electing, these people are dead because they voted for Democrats. Do you understand that? Let's keep going. These grasses, including Guinea grass, molasses grass, and buffalo grass, were originally introduced to the islands for livestock due to their drought-resistant properties. Hmm. However, their aggressive gro growth and extreme flammability have now contributed to the disastrous fires that have swept through Maui, the Independent reported. It's not the grasses. It's the fact that the environmental Democrat lunatics wouldn't let them do controlled burns and fire management. All right, let's keep going. Missile Camaria, co coordinator of the Pacific Fire Exchange, a project dedicated to, to sharing fire science among Pacific Island governments, explained these grasses are highly aggressive, grow very fast, and are highly flammable. Duh! Oh my God, I, okay, let's keep going. I, I'll try not to, to get on my box no more. Let's just let's just get the, the story out of the way. The deadly combination has created an environment ripe for fires in unprecedented scale and destructiveness. You think? Uh, the usual dry conditions in Maui this this time of year have only exasperated the risk. With more than 83% of the island currently experience abnormally dry or drought conditions, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor. Hmm. Hmm, you'd think that that would be a cause for concern, but not to Democrats, that they elected Democrats. Let's keep going. Adding to the complexity of the situation, downed power lines have also been identified as a potential. No, it's not a potential. It is, it is one of the causes. It could be just, it, it could be other causes. There were five, and this is another problem, the infrastructure. Five poles collapsed with all the power lines all at the same time in one, in one shot. That doesn't mean that there weren't other poles that collapsed all over the uh, into the grasslands. Now, you have to ask yourself, why were those poles still powered up? Well, I'll tell you why. Because guess what it takes to uh, for the fire hydrants to work? The fire, uh, the electricity powers the pumps that pump the water to the fire hydrants so that the fire crews can get the water on the fire. Do you see, do you see the progression here? So not only a lack of fire management, but a lack of fire planning. Where were the backup? Where was the backup to the power grid? You've got fire hydrants that you're going to need water, and they're dependent on the power grid? Are you kidding me? In a hurricane island where the hurricanes come in and blow through? I, this, this level of stupidity is beyond imagination. Let's keep going. So, this deadly combination, according to the complexity of the situation, or potential, yeah, dramatic videos captured the moment when a wooden, a wooden power pole, it was more than an A, it was five that I know of, and I'm sure there were more, snapped under the high winds and ignited flames and rapidly spread across the dry grass. Shane, too, a resident of Maui, witnessed the scene and described it as rapid and explosive chain reaction. It ran straight up the hill in a bigger pile of grass, and then with that high wind, the fire was blazing. In a matter of minutes, the whole place was engulfed, he recounted, and quoted by the New York Post. Satellite imagery further illustrates the extent of damage caused by these fallen power lines. Whole neighborhoods were reduced to ash in the wake of the flames, leaving thousands of residents displaced. The chaos unfolded as erratically spreading fires engulfed homes, sparked harrowing escapes, leaving behind a wake of destruction that forced thousands to flee their residences among the fires. The Lothia wildfire stood out as the most destructive and deadly, propelled by extreme winds that propelled an staggering force. In a video update on sober Sunday afternoon, Governor Josh Green, a Democrat, a Democrat, provided insight into the astonishing speed at with the Alathnia fire advanced. The winds gusting at an astonishing 81 miles per hour served as the driving force behind the fire's rapid spread. Green highlighted the meteor, meteoric pace at which the fire traveled, stating we believe 60 mile and 81 mile an hour part of the island. 
meant that the fire traveled one mile every minute. This unprecedented rate of movement transformed what it be, might, might have been. Now, if you had had controlled burns, you, it wouldn't have just been traveling right across a territory of just right fuel the whole way. I mean, it was like a fire's paradise. Have you ever seen fire travel up a wall? You ever set a piece of plywood on fire and watch it just whoosh, right up that piece of plywood? Let's just keep going. This unprecedented might have been realized as an incident to a crisis of, you think, of monumental proportions. As fires raged on, the winds associated with Hurricane Dora, positioned hundreds of miles south of Hawaii, compounded the already dire situation. The winds fanned the flames with unrelenting force, crossing highways, infiltrating neighborhoods, catching residents off guard. Laurie Mitchell, fire administrator, describes the fire movements as low to the ground, and structure to structure incredibly fast that outpaced anything firefighters could have done in the early hours. How many houses burned in Maui? Huh? Now, could the fire the firefighters couldn't do anything. The, the fire hydrants weren't working. This is what the media won't tell you. This is this is stupidity. I mean, do you think that it might have had a backup plan to get water to those fire hydrants besides the power grid? Oh my God, let's just keep going. The scale of the devastation caused by the Maui, Maui fire, wildfires is staggering, according to Hawaiian governor, Democrat governor, Josh Green. More than 2,200 structures have been destroyed or damaged by the fires, with residential properties accounting for approximately 86% of the total. The Lathia Blaze was the third major incident firefighters were tackling on the island that day. Many firefighters were likely tied up with the other two fires located an hour's drive across the island in the upcountry in South Maui, Lisa. Helicopters weren't an option due to winds blowing at 70 miles an hour. Generally, when a fire incident occurs, it's all hands on deck situation. It's not a standard practice for firefighters to hang back in anticipation of another fire popping up somewhere else, according to Lee. We used whatever we have. We kept reserves on hand. We didn't send them to, to, to an incident. Lee emphasized he didn't know the specific response time for Lathia. But when you look at what's going on, it looks like they were tapped out. We were overwhelmed. We only got so many resources. Firefighters who were in Lathia told the New York Times they had difficulty using fire hydrants that sputtered and ran dry. As the fire spread, it melted residential water pipes, depressurizing the system that feeds the hydrants. Now, how is that possible? If you're doing proper fire management, you should not have water pipes exposed to a fire situation that can melt. So that tells me there are a lack of inspections in this Democrat stronghold. That means they weren't even looking out. They have, or either that, they don't even have the codes necessary to prevent a disaster like this. Do you see the root cause of all this? It's mismanagement by their government. It has nothing to do with a freak act of nature. This has nothing to do with that. Let's keep going. The flames burned through the community and killed at least 93 people, destroyed some 2,700 structures and caused billions of dollars in damage. Albert Kuntz, a Lithia resident who escaped after seeing smoke near her home Tuesday evening, said people deserve answers. No kidding. But you know what? They're not going to get the answers. God. At the Lithia resident who escaped after seeing smoke near her home Tuesday, he said people deserve answers. Not answering them is just outrageous. But it's nothing new and it's totally what I expect from the firefighters. She said, it seems like standard operating season for the state and county in these situations when things go wrong. Okay, how much you want to bet this person voted Democrat? How much you want to bet this person voted Democrat? But yet she's complaining about the fact that her fire department's not working properly. Well, you get what you vote for. You get what you vote for. Let's keep going. Colts who's lost her home and belongings to the fire, said the failure to alert residents. By the way, that was another huge thing. They didn't even put the alert sirens on. Talk about incompetence. Not only do we have a lack of fire management, we got a lack of fire uh, uh, inspections and, and, and maybe fire codes. Now we got not even a warning system that warns the residents that the fire was coming. The, the, the sirens never even went off. 
let's just keep going. Either by emergency sirens or a first responder's vehicle hooking, honking on the street amounts to gross negligence. Do you think? You voted for it. Okay, standards set by the National Fire Protection Association say that the first fire engine company should arrive within four minutes of an alarm, but Maui County has previously said it doesn't consider that standard realistic for the island. That's it. I'm done. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.